Welcome back, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world. Today, we're going to continue our discussion about the competitors for the upcoming Shaw Classic, the inaugural Brian Shaw Classic that begins in just a few days. And today, we're going to talk about the one and only J.F. Carone. Ciao, homie. Welcome to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring attention to the world of strongman and show you how you can mimic those activities using everyday objects all around your own property. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing and remember to hit that bell button for all notifications so you'll know whenever I provide all the valuable content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So without further ado, on to today's topic. So... I looked into JF's Instagram and I haven't seen anything posted for like 28, 29 weeks. Of course, of course, they're all impressive posts, but they're from a long time ago, uh, like what's that, half a year ago or more. So I don't have anything updated to discuss with JF, but we can discuss how he did at World's Strongest Man and see how that's going to compare to the events at the Shaw Classic. So starting off with day one, and if you haven't checked this out yet, Please go to my video on Breaking News, World's Strongest Man 2020 finally started, complete day one results, to see all of the intricacies of what went into the scoring of day one of the World's Strongest Man qualifier. So it began with a farmer's walk, 331 pounds per hand for max distance. They were only allowed to drop the weight at the safe zones at either end of that 10 meter length of run. And JF Caron won his group. Um, by his pretty fair margin, 48.2 meters. So he did really well there. But if you compare him against all the other groups, for example, uh, Jerry Pritchett, Evan Singleton, Alexei Novikov, Kevin Ferris, um, and Terry Hollins did better. A lot of the, those guys will be at the Shaw Classic. So we have to keep that in consideration. The Shaw Classic is just 10 guys going through a series of six events to see who is the best. There is no qualifiers and there is no winning your group. So the format's a little different. So in this case, where JF is beating everybody in his group and that's good enough to advance to the finals, at the Shaw Classic, it may be a different story where he's already competing with what you would consider finalists because there's no qualifying heats. So anyway, fact of the matter is he did great on the farmer's walk. Then we go on to... The second event, which for his group, Group 4, was the squat. Some guys did deadlift, some did squat, and it was 694.5 pounds for the max number of reps you could do in 60 seconds, and he did an amazing 11 reps. That's a lot. It was enough to win his group there as well. He actually tied with Bobby Thompson there, who had an, also an incredible showing in the squat as well. So then if we move on to another video I did that you should check out, which is the finalist revealed, meaning it's the end of day two qualifiers, we can see they did a loading medley first with the crazy monster truck parts that I've mentioned on several videos already, like the crankshaft and the giant rim from a monster truck and all that crazy stuff with the sharp edges that was difficult and cumbersome to carry. Uh, JF Caron wins his group there too, right? Um, he ends up doing it in 47.13 seconds, enough to win his group. And then we move on to the log lift. Again, the second event here, some guys had a dumbbell clean and press. Some had a log lift. JF knew he only needed one rep to advance, so that's all he did. So we didn't get a good sense of what he can do in terms of uh, a 330.7 pound log lift for the max number of reps in 75 seconds because he only needed the one rep. So anyway, that was enough to advance him to the finals. And how did he do in the finals? Where if we if we go over to my winner revealed video, and we'll just pause that in place and blow it up so we can see it, you'll see, as you know by now, JF Caron podiumed at World's Strongest Man. He ended up in third place, uh, edging out Jerry Pritchett and Brian Shaw and a host of others, and coming in right behind Tom Stoltman in second, and of course the winner Alexei Novikov in first place. How did he achieve that? Well, in the loading medley, uh, which was the giant loading medley with the 275-pound anvil into a uh, super yoke with three dirt bikes uh, surrounding it, he got five points there. So again, these are points, not placings, uh, five points there. Then the keg toss, he did very well, nine points, second place only behind Tom Stoltman, and uh, so he did all the kegs in 20.37 seconds. Log ladder, he did poorly, so only two points there, um, which was last. There was no one point um, 
winner or nobody that got one point because Graham Hicks was out injured by that point, so there were only nine competitors. So uh, Caron last in the log ladder. Then in the deadlift, one of his specialties, of course, he gets eight points there, and like it would have been nine, but it was a three-way tie between him, Jerry Pritchett, and Adam Bishop. So they, when you split among three people, the second place, nine points, becomes eight. And of course, Novikov, that's the famous Novikov World Strongest Man record on the 18-inch deadlift, where he did 537.5 kilos. Uh, so again, JF Caron did 509 there, so still an incredible amount of weight. Hercules hold. He ends up 10 points. He ends up winning that one. And that did a lot to, like, cement his third place position, as did the eight points in the Atlas Stones, which is third place behind Tom Stoltman and Brian Shaw. So that's how he compiled enough points to come in third at World's Strongest Man. Now, that being said, how does that translate over to the Shaw Classic and the events there? Well, we have the log press, and we talked about JF's poor showing in the one log event at World's Strongest Man where he did try his best, you know, uh, rather than the first one in the qualifiers where he didn't have to. And so I'm giving him two points here. I think um, I only have him coming ahead of Terry Hollins, who... Terry, by the way, like, if you haven't checked out his Instagram or his YouTube, Terry and Kate, definitely do so. I'm going to do a whole video about the most fan-friendly, interactive strongmen of all time, and he's at the top of the list. Like, I've been commenting on some of his YouTube stuff and some of his Instagram stuff, and, like, Terry is in that boat with Big Laws, Evan Singleton, Gabriel Pena, like, uh, just a bunch of guys who, like, respond to you same day. These are celebrities, right? And they're responding to my questions and my comments same day. It's just freaking amazing. Terry actually found the video that I did, like this one, spotlighting him and his preparation for the Shaw Classic, and I was missing a piece of information about his prep, and he commented and added the, the extra info that I was missing. It was unbelievable, and I'm, like, really thankful that he would take the time to do that. Um, big shout out to Terry Hollins. So, um, but on all of his videos, he's pretty open about the fact that log lift is his downfall and his shortcoming. So he's the only one I have coming in under uh, JF. Then in the super yoke, I'm giving JF six points. So he would be, be behind Kevin Ferris, Jerry Pritchett, Alexi, and Adam Bishop in that event. In the farmer's walk, I'm giving JF six points again. Here he would be behind Maxime Boudreau. Go check out the video I did spotlighting him if you want to know more details about why I chose that score. And then he would be be behind also Jerry Pritchett. Check out the video I did on Jerry. Um, Kevin Ferris, who, who has otherworldly grip strength and is very, very good in Farmers. And then Alexi, who I have pegged to win the Farmers. Then in the deadlift, of course, um, I have JF doing similar to what he did last time. So again, I think Alexi's going to win the deadlift. And then I think that Jerry Pritchett, JF Caron, and Adam Bishop are going to tie for the second, whatever the second most weight is after Alexi, therefore ending up splitting the points into eight each again. Circus Dumbbell Lift, I have given JF three points, so I don't think he'll do well there because even though he uh, did log at World's Strongest Man, I have to um, take the only evidence I have, and I don't see any updated videos on any of his social media showing that he's trained this recently, so I have to just take his overhead pressing in the log and translate that over here just for lack of other recent information and evidence. And then uh, I have him coming in second in the Atlas Stone, so gaining a lot of points there, only to Brian Shaw. Uh, Brian will win this because Tom Stoltman's not there, or else Brian would be second and JF would be third, but JF will be second place, get nine points there. And I have him finishing at the Shaw Classic in fifth place, just one point behind the late edition Kevin Ferris, who I think will make it into fourth place, and four points above Maxime Boudreau, who's coming in sixth. So let me know in the comments below what you think of my analysis, especially let me know in the comments below if you found updated evidence of his prep and training that I haven't been able to find. I'd love to incorporate it and do a follow-up here. And tell me what you think about the breakdown that I've done here today and where you think J.F. Caron will fall or will place in the Brian Shaw Classic. Is he a podium finisher because he just finished on the podium at World's Strongest Man? Or 
is he what I think, and is he entering in a slightly different set of events where I think he'll come in a little lower? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you again next time. Take care. So if you like this video and want to learn more about any of the products I described during this video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.